Uh, Stephen, we, we, uh, we're very grateful of manufacturing NI for, for their input into these uh, little round tables we've had, but the asked us to come outside the city and that we focus on, on manufacturing today, so the floor is yours. Hi, thanks Martin, Hi, and welcome to everyone as well, and just to, to echo your thanks to uh, the guys here at U-Form. Uh, as you can see, this is a, not what people understand to be a manufacturing facility. This is a very uh, plush, very high quality uh, place for people to work. Uh, in many ways, asking for one of these meetings to come out of, of Belfast and into a place like this was actually to, to physically demonstrate how much manufacturing has actually changed. Uh, they aren't the old style, difficult workplaces, tough environments, etc. etc. Uh, they are very modern. Uh, employers and, and with that offering very modern careers and, and I think certainly as I drive around the north uh, this is one of the better facilities I have to say that the, uh, the guys here are very much invested in uh, the workplace and very much invested in uh, their brand and, and this is a, a, I think a very good example of what manufacturing in the future very, very much ways very much looks like uh, so thanks very much for agreeing to, to come here I personally would have had you up in Derry, but I know that we probably would only had maybe two or three people along. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're slightly different numbers already. Uh, so Sinead and I bit the bullet a little bit and, and came up the road an hour uh, so that people from Belfast could make it uh, as well. Uh, but everyone's very, very welcome. Uh, <clears throat> it's a bit of background, I suppose, giving you a sense of what manufacturing actually looks like in Northern Ireland at the moment, because I, I think that gives a, a very useful perspective for, for everyone. Uh, we published some research earlier this year from Oxford Economics that for the first time really unveiled the entire impact that manufacturing has on the economy and on communities across uh, the north. Uh, whilst there's 85,000 jobs directly employed, they actually support a total of 214,000 jobs across the economy. So that's one in four jobs in Northern Ireland depend upon a manufacturing wage. Great employers like <coughs> Donnelly's and, and uh, people here at Uform. Uh, they're largely family owned, as you're experiencing today. Uh, they're very ambitious, they're very hard working, they're very creative and innovative. Uh, what we've uh, uncovered is that, particularly here in Mid Ulster, this is the, in many ways the beaten heart of Northern Ireland's economy. We're right in the centre of Northern Ireland. Uh, and when it comes to uh, this local Mid Ulster area, more than half of all the jobs are a manufacturing job. Uh, those are the, uh, the people like the family here and others who have not waited for the economy to come and bring jobs to them, they've actually created their own businesses, invested in themselves and in their staff, uh, and making great products with great people and selling those at markets at home and abroad. And, and I think this, this area is a very good example of where we would like to see certainly the, the whole of the Northern Ireland economy going, which is not sitting and waiting for people to create those opportunities, but actually going out and being brave <coughs> and ambitious and, and creating those opportunities for themselves. Uh, when it comes to wages, the, the total supported wages in Northern Ireland is about £4.2 billion from the manufacturing uh, economy itself. Uh, £6.6 .6 billion worth of uh, export sales. Uh, and as a small economy, we really depend on uh, those external sales coming to here in order to, to, uh, to create work and, and also to create wealth uh, right across Northern Ireland. And I know that's a particular theme for uh, the executive and, and certainly for uh, your own party minister. The, <clears throat> the other interesting thing for me is that there's constantly a call on the problem that we have in Northern Ireland with productivity. I and mean, yes, it is a, a big problem, but when you look at the manufacturing sector in particular, uh, it's 38 more 38% 38 more productive than the rest of the Northern Ireland economy. Uh, and when you look at advanced manufacturing, it's actually 27% more again. Uh, so if we with a very simple equation for us, if we want this sort of productivity problem, then we need to be making more stuff. Uh, there was a very useful launch yesterday of uh, the Matrix report, and uh, I went along to that, and actually uncovered uh, what our advanced manufacturing sector was actually contributing. Uh, so roughly about 44,000 jobs in total. And when you think about what those uh, employers are, those aren't just people that are uh, in, in advanced materials and aerospace etc etc but, but companies like this as well have an advanced manufacturing element to them whether that be through 
computer aided design, etc., etc., etc. So if we link that to the comments on the, the launch last week from Catalyst Inc, which talked about the potential growth in the knowledge economy to potentially doubling the amount of people employed in that sector to about 80, 88,000 people in the next 10 years. Uh, what you find is that about 70% of those jobs are actually in existing and traditional industries. Uh, the, the knowledge economy isn't just about people zipping up businesses into a laptop bag and opening up uh, a software house in Belfast City Centre or elsewhere, but it's actually about uh, jobs and technology roles within existing industries, such as uh, the industry that we're, we're here at today. The, uh, the interesting thing for me is where we sit right now, there are thousands of people employed within literally you could throw a coat down and, 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 and uh, see a thousand, more than a couple of thousand employees. 130 here at Uform, great business next door in terms of MMS here, uh, it's working with some of the biggest manufacturers in Northern Ireland as part of their supply chain. Across the road you've got SDC trailers employing 950 people, there thereabouts. Just across the way you have Create Concrete and another 650 people. In behind us here you've got Macrete and a whole raft of other uh, manufacturers as well. There's thousands of people employed in this community because local people have created those jobs. Uh, and that's in many ways what we would like to see kind of happening is that those local companies are supported in their growth uh, and the conditions are created by yourself, Minister, and, and colleagues uh, in starting the executive to allow those people to succeed. And the good bit of news, and, and I know that there's a lot of commentary last week around potential changes to uh, our rating system, and the good news from a manufacturing perspective is you've, you've agreed that you want to continue the cap on manufacturing uh, industrial derating, uh, and that's very, very welcome. I shared that news with uh, our membership uh, that afternoon, and, and <coughs> with a lot of response, a lot of very positive response, um, people are very grateful uh, that the executive decided, uh, and yourself in particular, Shai, decided that's the route that you, that you want to continue. There's bits and pieces, wrinkles, and, and some of the plans that will be dealt with through the consultation and stuff as we move forward, but uh, people are very uh, pleased and, and uh, asked me to thank you personally, so, that, so thank you. Uh, I know today uh, these meetings are, are largely about uh, the kind of uh, issues that we face with the UK leaving the EU and, and with it bringing Northern Ireland with it. We started developing out a, a bit of a, uh, a bit of a, a plan or a document in terms of identifying and addressing those challenges that, that may be ahead, but also trying to look at those opportunities. And, and as one uh, a member of my board uh, suggested that if, if, if his business decided that from tomorrow we're going to be creating blue widgets rather than red widgets, he would expect everybody in the, the company to try to work towards uh, those blue widgets and that, that's, that's understandable in, in many ways. Uh, however, there are big challenges that, that everybody recognises that, that we really need to try to uh, address in many ways. Uh, I mean, we've kind of divided out our document in terms of uh, and we will be sharing this with, with colleagues around the table and, and the executive as well uh, when it's ready to go in many ways. Uh, but it does bring challenges in terms of the impact it has on the manufacturing economy here in Northern Ireland. Uh, it impacts on uh, Northern Ireland as a UK land border. It impacts upon uh, our trade on the island of Ireland. It impacts on Northern Ireland as part of the UK in itself and it impacts on uh, access to the, the EU market. Uh, and not surprisingly, there's been a lot of dialogue, a lot of it's publicly articulated uh, over the last number of months since the referendum result. Uh, the biggest concerns remain the uncertainty piece. So thankfully we've got uh, people uh, like you form who are determined that their future, they will chart for themselves uh, and they will deal with those challenges. But some are holding back and there is a, a big uh, uncertainty around making big investments. So what, what will 2019 look like? What will 2020, 2021 look like? And as a result, people are holding back investing in plant and machinery uh, and investing in, in factory premises. Uh, there are uh, increasing concerns about the availability of labour. We have a number of examples of people who have said uh, that very uh, valued colleagues uh, who may have arrived here from Eastern Europe in particular, have decided to return home. Uh, and uh, even though they've been here for quite a long time, 
Uh, I know that in the UK numbers were out yesterday, there was only in terms of bringing in the, the harvest in many respects, which is largely a casual labour uh, pursuit, it was only 67% of the available labour that was required to bring in the harvest in the UK in the last couple of months. So the UK as a whole can only feed itself by about 40%, only produces about 40% of the food it consumes. Uh, and even now, that 40% that they do produce, they're having difficulty getting that out of the ground and, and into marketplaces. Uh, so the availability of labour is a challenge. We have had some comments of people saying that they're, they're leaving, returning back to Eastern Europe and may come back to the island of Ireland, but may not come north. Uh, so I think we need to address the, the, the kind of uh, <coughs> narrative around, around that in many ways. Uh, and uh, regardless of, of what the problems are, and Sinead and I met with the uh, guys from the Gibraltar government, Gibraltar, is that the name? That is, that was, <laughs> uh, last night, and, and that was a fascinating discussion actually. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. They share many of the problems that, that we have. But they're not part of the customs union. They actually have a hard border with Europe, and they're warning us against uh, what that can do to an economy in many respects. So any prospect of any checks on the border uh, will be catastrophically damaging to the Northern Ireland economy, full stop. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that, because we can't really know Gibraltar was all the representatives were here, and only to sneak in with us. Yeah, so, 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 so